Once upon a time, there was a chubby kid with a horrible stutter. And it was so bad that he spent most of his time trying to figure out how to not get called on in class. Because every time that he got called on, that wound up with him getting laughed at, picked on, made fun of. He retreated into a world of fantasy and comic books and was fascinated with the idea of superhuman powers. Well, that kid is me, and along the way, I realized that all the negative emotions and even the stutter itself were simply self-imposed limitations and that I had control over them and so I could break free from them. So I stand here now and I make the bold claim not only that I am superhuman, but I'm utterly convinced that everyone has inherent superpowers just waiting to be discovered and developed so that you can live a happier life and make the world a better place. But more importantly than that, I know how to show you how to do it. Does that sound like something you're interested in? Okay, good. Um, but first of all, I have to deal with this padlock. Now, fun fact about me, I'm a rock and roll fan from way back, and so in the spirit of the monsters of arena rock from the 80s, I'm going to ask you, who am I? And I want you guys to say, Iron Tamer, as loud as you can. And if you can't remember it, it's right there on the screen, okay? So let's give it a practice run. Who am I? Iron Tamer. Yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Let's give it another practice run. You can do better than that, though. Who am I? Iron Tamer. Much better. Let's do it for real now. Who am I? Catch. Why are we so fascinated? Why do we love superheroes so much? Well, I believe that it's because they embody the best qualities that we have as humans. In fact, let's look at what a superhuman power is. Advance. Superhuman power. Human, that's you and me, requires no further explanation. We all know what that is, right? Let's look at power. It's the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. It comes from the Latin root, poter, which means to be able. Incidentally, our modern word potential comes from that same Latin root word. So our power and our potential come from the same place, even in the language that we use. It's something to think about. And then super means over, above, or beyond, exhibiting the characteristics of its type to an extreme or excessive degree. For instance, breaking out of shackles and padlocks would be a display of superhuman strength, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Stay with me, folks. <laughs> but maybe superhuman strength isn't your thing. It's not for a lot of people but I'm convinced that we all have superpowers. So what I want you to do is start thinking in terms of who is superhuman you? And I'm gonna share my formula with you on how you can discover and develop that. It's a simple formula. We start with inspiration, we use our imagination, and then we take action. So let's break that down a little bit because I'm a big fan of clear definitions. Inspiration, that's when we have the spark of an idea of something that may seem impossible, but with enough churning around in our mind, we start to believe that it can be possible for us to do it. And so then we start to choose attributes of mentors and influences as we move in the direction of achieving that. For me, as a kid growing up with a stutter, kind of angry all the time, started with this guy. That's who I wanted to be. I wanted that superhuman strength and to be completely honest, being motivated by anger was something that I sort of identify with, with that character. But I'm not angry anymore, and that's a good thing. Realizing that becoming bombarded with gamma radiation or was something that was not really easy to figure out how to do in the pre-internet days, or even, you know, finding a radioactive spider to bite me, I looked. It was hard to do. There was no, there was no search engines back then, you know. I decided that for me to express that part of myself would mean becoming a performing strongman or an old-time strongman as it's sometimes called. 
So what I want to do is show you some of the inspirations and influences that I've had along that path. First, there's a guy named the Mighty Adam. He was born in Poland in 1893. A small guy, about five feet tall, about 150 pounds. And you can see in that photo on the screen that he is driving a nail through a board with his hand. And he just has a small piece of cloth to pad it. A vaudeville era strongman, one of the most well-known guys. Another feat that was very popular then was to take one of these. This is a 60-penny spike. It's six inches long, a quarter of an inch in diameter, and very pointy on the end. So I wrap it in leather to protect my hands. So the old vaudeville strongman would do this feat. And they tell me that it takes about 250 to 300 pounds of pressure to bend this particular piece. And when I think of that, I think of the quote from the Mighty Adams biography, never inhibit yourself with the seemingly impossible. If you place no limits upon yourself, then you have none. And if you think that you're strong, then you are. So I'm gonna bend this for you. Who am I? Good job. And there you have it. Heads up, coming at you, coming in hot. Now, the mighty Adam passed away in 1977, but for several decades of his life, he had a, a protege, a guy named Slim the Hammer Man. And there's a photo of Slim doing the lift that made him famous. Now, I'm very thankful that Slim is not only an influence and an inspiration to me, but also a friend and a mentor. He's in his 80s now, still one of the strongest men you'll ever hope to meet. And when I was working on this particular feat, he explained to me that the way we determine how much torque is on the wrist is we multiply the length of the handle by the weight of the hammer. So I have a 16-pound hammer here on a 31-inch handle, which means there's approximately 496 pounds, give or take, of pressure on the wrist to do this lift. It's a pretty scary thought. And I told Slim that, and he said, well, it's not that you don't have the power. The power's already there inside you. You just can't access it because of the fear. Question is, how do you bring it out? So I'm going to show you what he showed me. Who am I? It's getting better. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Slim had a protege, a guy named Dennis Rogers, who was my introduction into this world of bizarre strength, feats of strength. There's a photo of Dennis and me. And Dennis told me very early on, you must remove all doubt and limitation from your mind because the mind controls the body. And it's absolutely true. Because if I had any doubt, in my mind, there's no way I could take this six-inch adjustable wrench. I mean, y'all have used wrenches before, right? You know they're not supposed to bend. I'm going to wrap it up just like I did the other, the nail, and see what I can do with it. Who am I? You're a good, good bunch. I like this. Thank you. Heads up. You got a pen holder for your desk now. I don't throw real good. I break things. <laughs> so you can see there's a theme running here that transcends the physicality of the feats of strength and goes into the mindset and the mental aspect of it and how utterly important it is. Taking that to heart, I decided to find out as much as I possibly could about how my mind works in terms of practical, useful information. And so I started studying what I call mind masters. And here's a quote for you. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Now that sounds a lot like what the strong men are telling me, right? But it didn't come from a strong man. 
didn't come from an athlete at all. In fact, it came from Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich, which, as you know, is one of the most well-known and widely read books on prosperity and wealth, but also personal development that's ever been written. Through studying Napoleon Hill and watching the movie The Secret, I ran across a guy named Bob Proctor. From Bob Proctor, I learned a lot about my subconscious mind and how the paradigms that I have literally determine my reality. And then another guy that I have to mention, who is also in the movie The Secret, is Dr. Joe Vitale. From Joe, I learned a tremendous amount about gratitude and forgiveness and how powerful those things are. Met Joe a few years ago, told him how inspired I was by his material and by his teachings. Turns out he's a fan of what I do. He's a fan of strong man in general, so much so that he became a student of mine. And there we have a photo of Joe and a piece of steel that he bent in one of our sessions. Joe's a steel bending strong man now. And I'm happy that I got to be a part of that. So we have the mind masters and we have the strong men all saying a variation of the same universal truth. The truth that Earl Nightingale called the strangest secret. And that is, we become what we think about. So it stands to reason if that's true, and I want to be superhuman, then I have to think superhuman thoughts. It's necessary for me to think like a superhuman. So, you know, earlier I said that we all have superpowers, and maybe superhuman strength's not your thing, and that's cool, and it's true. But we all do have some superpower, usually more than one. And one thing that we all share, every human shares, is the second step in our formula, and that's the superpower of imagination, or the ability to form images with our minds. And I call it a superpower because it's the most powerful force in all of creation, if you stop and think about it. Look around this room. Literally anything you can lay your eyes on in this room, the stage, the table, the ceiling, the lights, the stuff that I'm up here breaking, all of it started as an image in someone's mind before it was a physical reality. Imagination is the seat of creation, and it's the most powerful force that we can think of. So strong, in fact, that Neville Goddard said, man is only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of the imagination. Or to put it another way, we don't stay with it long enough, and we don't think big enough, and that's why we fail. The imagination actually contains the key to unlock the superpowers that we have because the imagination has a direct influence on our self-image. Your self-image determines whether we use our superhuman power of imagination for good, to make our lives better, to make the world around us a better place, or for evil, the opposite of that. We can never be more successful than the image that we have of ourselves. Chances are, though, that you didn't create your own self-image. Someone did that for you before you had a say-so in the matter. But the good news is, no one and nothing can prevent you from improving your self-image, except, of course, yourself. Now, I've been told that in India, when a trainer wants to take an elephant and train him to become a work animal, he gets him when he's a little baby, and he takes a chain, and he puts it around the elephant's leg, and then ties it off to a tree. And the baby elephant doesn't like this, and he'll pull against the chain, but he's not strong enough to break it. And the harder and more he pulls, the deeper the chain digs into the flesh on his leg. The elephant doesn't like that, and he very quickly begins to associate any attempt to escape with pain and failure. And so he stops, and it works so well that years later, the trainer can take this adult elephant, when he wants him to stay in one spot, put the chain around his leg, tie it off to a tree, and the adult elephant won't even attempt to walk away. Possibility never even enters his big elephant mind, because from a very early age, he's learned that any attempt to do anything besides stand still when that chain goes on results in pain and failure. Now, never mind the fact that he's grown into this monstrous behemoth of an animal that has a power 
thousands of times greater than what it would take to snap a puny chain. He just doesn't know. He's not aware of his power. And I wonder how much we're like that elephant. Because when we're born, we have all this possibility, all this promise, and all this potential. And then at a very early age, someone comes along, and usually for our own good, (laughs) puts our very first limitation on us in the form of the word, no. And it feels secure to us, even if we don't like it, because we know that they're looking out for us. They have our best interest. And I, for one, am thankful, very, very grateful that my mother told me no when I said, you know what? I'm going to climb up on top of the house and jump off and learn how to fly because I want superpowers. She said no. Things might have turned out differently if she hadn't. So I'm thankful for that. But in addition to the security that goes along with it, it's good for us, we start to pick up things that aren't so good for us, like well, you can't do that. And, well, you'll never be able to do that. And that's impossible. And it starts to close in on us. It starts squeezing a little bit of the life and the hope and the imagination out of us. And then at some point, it becomes a part of our internal dialogue. It becomes our self-talk. And we say things to ourselves that we would never say to another person. You don't have to raise your hand, but think about, have you ever said anything truly mean to yourself? Think about whatever those things are, and if you had a friend who said those things to you, would you still be friends with them? And yet we do it to ourselves. And we start to say things like, I'm not good enough, or there's no way I could ever do that. And eventually, this is closing in on us, we become a lot like that baby elephant. I'm like, I'm not even going to try because I'll just get hurt or I'll fail. <sighs> and it's crushing the life out of us. And we forget that life is about expansion and fuller expression. But unlike the elephant, we can make the conscious choice to call on a power that is thousands of times greater than any limitation we've put on ourselves. And we can break out of it. Thank you. Who am I? Nice. And so that's how we use our imagination, right? To construct that self image. You okay? (laughs) The last step in our formula is action. Because as Goethe said, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. It's not enough to be inspired to become superhuman, to become superhuman you. It's not enough to imagine yourself as a superhuman version of yourself. You must take action. And an action that I recommend everyone take, that you guys can all do. You can start doing it today. Once you form that image, that you're inspired to become. Writing out affirmations is so incredibly powerful. Write it out in language that is positive. Write it out in such a way that it's in the present tense and that invokes the feeling of the goal already being achieved. Operate from the feeling of the goal fulfilled. Rewrite it multiple times a day. Read it even more often than that. And think about it even more often than that. Let it be the first thing on your mind when you wake up in the morning, last thing on your mind when you go to bed, and something you revisit all day long. And I promise you that you will very quickly rewrite your old limiting self-image and replace it with the new superhuman you. Now, it's funny. I had a colleague that I shouldn't name in the uh, fitness business Tell me, yeah, I, uh, I tried that affirmation thing. didn't work for me. I'm just not an affirmation guy. Well, that's an affirmation, and it's working. Because you're telling yourself that it ain't going to work. And that's what you get, because you become what you think about. As Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you are right. So don't be like that guy. Be superhuman. 
And then all action begins the same way, with a decision. And as we saw earlier, I like to clearly define things. So let's think about the word decision. We've got another Latin root, de meaning from, and caidere meaning to cut. So a true decision then means that you are committed to achieving a result and you're cutting yourself off from any other possibility. I have one more feat that I'd like to do for you. I have here a balloon. And between me and the balloon, I have an inch thick board. And remember our photo of the mighty Adam from earlier? I have a nail and I have a small rag. And I have made the decision that I'm going to drive this nail through that board and pop that balloon. And I'm cutting myself off from any other possibility. So much so, I don't even consider there to be a board there. I'm going to pop the balloon. You guys with me? All right. Hang on to this. Make sure this works first. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to come just like this. We ready? All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. I almost forgot. One other thing I have to make sure I tell you. How many of us have ever said that we can't get anything done because we're running around putting out fires all the time? Right? Those are just distractions. And a distraction is a decision not to stick to your original goal. So there is no board. And once you're fully committed, there's no fire. Thank you. As you leave, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to be inspired to see who superhuman you really is. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination to develop that new superhuman self-image. I'm going to ask you to take action every day in the direction of superhuman you because the action that you take could be what inspires someone else to greatness. You've been wonderful. Who am I? I am Thank you.